Hey guys, welcome to another ranking, and welcome to my ranking for Guy Ritchie's movies. Guy Ritchie is an interesting filmmaker, because he makes a lot of terrible movies, but also a lot of great movies. Well, entertaining movies, to say the least. Um, I thought I did a ranking of his movies, but apparently I didn't. So, here we go. This is a year for Guy Ritchie, he's got two films coming out, I've seen one of them already. I should probably do this ranking after The Covenant comes out, but I was in a Guy Ritchie kick. I just saw his new movie, and I watched a couple of them. I re-watched some Guy Ritchie movies to see if they were, like, you know, still held up or anything. And there was one Guy Ritchie movie I haven't seen. I'm glad I never saw it, because, well, actually I wish I saw it years ago, because then I had to suffer through it. Anyways, I digress. Uh, he has 13 films he's directed, and here is all 13 of them ranked, in my opinion, from my least favorite to my favorite. Let's get to it. Coming at number 13 is Swept Away. Swept Away is a remake of an Italian film that I never saw or even cared to see. It is a movie with Madonna and some guy trapped on an island together. They fall in love. Spoilers, they don't end up together. There you go. Just saved you two hours of your life. Terrible film. Madonna's a terrible actress. Whoever the guy is is a terrible actor. They have no chemistry. There's nothing intriguing or interesting about their story or about their characters, so who gives a fuck? Number 12, Revolver. This is a movie I didn't see. I watched it just the other day, and it's terrible. It's one of those really shitty Jason Statham movies. He's got a lot of... I actually don't hate Jason Statham. I used to not be a big fan of him, but I, I've actually grown to kind of like him a little bit. He seems like a pretty cool dude. <laughs> This movie's terrible, though. It's a generic, crappy, horribly shot, choppily edited action film. Jason Statham is terrible. He's mumbling his way through the movie. And this is just definitely one of Guy Ritchie's shittiest films. It was agony to get through. Fucking terrible. Number 11 is King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. It's so weird that a lot of people think this movie is good and underrated. Can't stand it. I actually have a guilty pleasure for the... Uh, the 2000s, the early 2000s uh, King Arthur movie with Clive Owen. Actually, actually, I actually enjoy that movie a lot more. Um, but this movie is terrible. I don't like Charlie Hunnam as King Arthur. I hate Jude Law. I hate everybody in this movie. Eric Bana. This movie has a great cast, but it's just terrible. It, it, the style is ugly. The CGI is ugly. So much slow-mo and weird editing and pacing. I just, I, I, I did not like this film. Some people loved it and got engaged and entertained by the style. I thought it was obnoxious. Couldn't stand it. So, yeah. Number 10 is Rock and Rolla. I think this is his most overrated film. A lot of people really dig it. I think it's annoying. This is around the same time as, like, Matthew Vaughn's Layer Cake, those, like, unique British crime comedy films. Layer Cake's miles and miles better than this movie. This movie is annoying, douchey, unlikable, and just unwatchable to me. Editing is also terrible, a lot of shaky cam, just Gerard Butler gets on my nerves in this film, and I, I like some Gerard Butler movies, but this is definitely one of his most obnoxious performances, and it's definitely Guy Ritchie, one of his most obnoxious directed films, so, not a fan. Number nine, Aladdin, I did not like Aladdin, there's some good stuff in it, I'll even say Will Smith has some funny moments here and there, there's a couple, couple scenes that feel like a Bollywood movie, which is what it should have gone for, but no, it's just a pretty much shot for shot remake of Aladdin. Aladdin's already, like, a perfect animated film, so I don't know why they did a remake of it. It's bad. The guy who plays Aladdin is terrible. The girl who plays Jasmine is okay. The Jafar is awful. The CGI looks like shit. All the songs are just heavily auto-tuned and just has no spirit and soul and enjoyment like the original Aladdin. So, fucking cash grab. That's what this movie is. Number eight, Sherlock Holmes' Game of Shadows. It's actually not a bad sequel. I think there's a lot of clusterfuck in it and there's a lot of plot holes especially in the ending but i still enjoyed danny jr sherlock i enjoyed you laz watson and i liked uh moriarty jared harris's moriarty it was pretty cool i uh, wasn't on board at, with uh what's her name um numi repulse she was eh. there's also a lot of weird slow-mo scenes that worked in the first one not so much in this one it's an okay sequel i don't mind it but definitely nowhere near as good as the first number seven snatch 
a entertaining movie that is a little hard to follow through because you have no idea what some of these characters are saying. There's a lot of mumbling and weird gibberish in this film, especially Brad Pitt's character. Brad Pitt is really fun in the movie, but you can't understand a damn word he's saying. There's also some plot elements that you just don't give a fuck about. There's a lot of stories that are going on in this movie, and some of it go nowhere. Some are go in like the weirdest places. There is some funny moments. There is a lot of entertainment in this film, but... Definitely not a movie I watch a lot. It's it's decent. I'll say that. Number six, The Man from Uncle, a film I never really liked. I, I watched it when it came out, didn't like it, watched it again last night. A lot better. I actually think Henry Cavill is really good in this movie. I even think Army Hammer's pretty good. And there's actually a lot of funny scenes. It feels like a very like spoofy James Bond-esque kind of movie. I actually had a lot more fun with it than I did the first time, so. I give it that. There's nothing groundbreaking or even highly thought-provoking or profound in the film, but it's entertaining, so give it that. <laughs> Number five is the first Sherlock Holmes movie. I think the first Sherlock Holmes movie, was. I think it was good. Danny Jr., Jude Law, Richard McAdams, Mark Strong, all really good. It had a good mystery. I actually didn't know where it was kind of going and stuff. I loved how they put, like, like cultist stuff and everything. It almost feels like Assassin's Creed, but it's, like, Sherlock Holmes. The slow-mo things is really cool. How he does things and pieces things together in his mind. How he sees things, like, ten steps ahead of everyone is pretty cool. I thought it was a really cool and unique take on the Sherlock Holmes story. I don't think it's the best Sherlock Holmes story, but I think it's a very good one. And, yeah, I, I, I do get why they made a sequel, because it's, it's an enjoyable film. All right, number four is Operation Fortune. I did a whole review of it. Hopefully that video gets out. I had some tech issues doing that video, so if it doesn't come out, my review, it's a fun movie. I think it's a funny idea. I, I love that it's a comedy and an action film about them getting a movie star to like go undercover for this like spy organization to get this arms dealer. It's really weird and funny, but the action's cool. Jason Statham, Aubrey Plaza, Carrie Ellis... Josh Hartnett, um, Ju uh, not Jula, Hugh Grant are all in this film. They're all great. It's a very fun movie. It's in theaters in the next week. Definitely check it out. Number three is Wrath of Man. Wrath of Man was a huge surprise. This is nothing like a Guy Ritchie movie. This movie is brutal, dark, bleak, gritty. This movie is just... It's definitely one of his most bleakest films. I really dug it. I actually thought Jason Statham really kicked ass in this film about this like like he's almost like a crime boss who becomes like a, who like pretends to be a police officer and he's looking for like the crooked cops and the bad people who killed his son and stuff. It's really good. It goes into the underbelly of the crime world and corruption in the police force. It's such a good movie. Jason Statham is killer. Josh Hartnett's in this movie is good. The action's really good. The pacing is really good. And I loved the tone that this movie was going for. Really good film. I really enjoyed it. Number two, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is fun. It's a fun movie. It's super entertaining. Very funny. Love Vinnie Jones in this film. He is probably some of the best lines ever. I think this is, this is the directorial debut of Guy Ritchie. And this was a hell, hell of a good. Hell of a good our total debut this was always my favorite guy ritchie movie until a couple years ago which is my number one my number one is the gentleman the gentleman is just it's so good the cast is great you got matthew mcconaughey you got jelly hunnam henry golding um hugh grant like everyone is so good they're on their a game in this movie it's very funny it, it, it goes into the Hollywood industry, it goes into like the underground drug use problem, it goes into the crime boss and the mafia, it talks about a lot of cool stuff, and it's just enjoyable. I can tell so many actors, it's had a lot of fun making this movie, and Guy Ritchie had a lot of fun, you know, directing and executing it, it was super good. I, it's funny, it's bleak at times, it goes in some crazy weird directions that I didn't see going. I just really got invested with the characters. I really enjoyed a lot of these characters, especially McConaughey and Charlie Hunnam's character. And it's I, I just I really it's just an enjoyable crime story that I I just loved watching. I've seen this movie three times and I'm still still is a very watchable film. And I still haven't got tired of it. I love it. Gentlemen, really good film. <laughs> so yeah, that was my uh, quick little ranking of Guy Ritchie's movies. So let me know in the comments below what is your favorite, least favorite, or entire ranking of Guy Ritchie's movies. 
Comment below, let me know. And as always, for this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.